Hey everyone, Justin from Aftershoot here. I am super excited that you found us. We're here to revolutionize your workflow. Now, you found a really cool video to get started with. There are a bunch of videos out there teaching you all about how to get started, what the different features are, how to use each feature. But this video, this is all about what, what should you expect on your first AI call? Well, I'm here to tell you. So, Aftershoot is an AI culling and an AI editing program. And what we've designed Aftershoot to do is be a helper to you, the photographer, get to your end destination faster. What that means is that we're not here to make creative decisions and we still expect humans to be involved in their workflow. Now, to really cover this in depth, I'm gonna go over a couple really important points that I think you should know walking into Aftershoot. If you were to take a look at my screen here, you'll see when the flash doesn't fire, but there's multiple versions of that same image with the flash not firing, it's not sure why that happened, so it's not going to reject it because maybe you do want it for some reason, whether it's a silhouette, whether it's some other version. So it's just saying, hey, here's a representation. Here are four images in which the flash did not fire all together so you may want to check them out or you may just want to hit the x key and reject them so again there is still the need for a human element to some of these pieces now after shoot is designed to cluster all of your similar images together and try and pull out the best ones so we have a bunch of magical unicorns behind the scenes looking at your photos looking for similarities in them assessing them and then trying to pull out the best image from each set with that being said, whenever there is an error within the cull, we still want to represent one of those error images. So in this case, you're gonna notice this photo has a warning label on it. It's telling me that something's wrong with this photo. It's not sure why it's the way it is, but it doesn't wanna make the creative decision, again, of rejecting an image you may have wanted just because it didn't meet a technical quality that Aftershoot found. So in this case, if I were to open this up in our loop view, you can see I 100% missed focus. I was way off, I didn't even, not even close. I'm focused on the background. So what Aftershoot decided to do is say, hey, you took two of these photos, so we wanna show it to you. We're not sure if it was a creative decision, if you were trying to focus on something that wasn't the subject, so we wanted to give you a representation of it so you could see it. So again, I would go through that same process of rejecting them. So the idea behind Aftershoot isn't to necessarily get you all the way to the finish line, culling everything using AI, but rather to give you all of the tool tips and tricks to help speed up your manual review process utilizing the AI. There will always be decisions that you as a photographer make that won't necessarily match what AI or even another photographer might do. So for this reason alone, we wanna give you a better representation of all your images. So in this case, I have 807 photos that I took. Realistically, Aftershoot got me to 247. That's a fantastic reduction in the amount of work I need to do. But realistically, I actually edited these and did all of my workflow and I really only kept like seven of them, right? So there's different workflows available to you and you can always check out those workflow videos, but I'll cover them real briefly here. When I'm going through and reviewing, I have a plus seven here. I can see all these other options and I can always review the images and decide whether or not I agree with the AI. Now, of course, I took these photos so I know very well what photos I like and what I don't like right off the bat. So I can tell you with this plus seven, none of these are gonna be the winner instead. But if I was uncertain, if I came to a photo that I was very unsure about the results of, I could always go in and make some revisions to that cull by using our keyboard shortcuts. Now, of course, the keyboard shortcuts are all listed up here. So A for add, S to swap, X to reject, and the period and comma key will cycle you through all those similar images. So I'm here to just help review what the AI did and get a better understanding of what I actually want. Now in this case, because I know I only want seven or eight photos, I'm gonna use a different feature called My Selections to really just pull out the cream of the crop. And that's the beauty of Aftershoot. We designed this to really get you a baseline call, get you started, get you further along in the process, but then still give you full freedom and full control to decide how you want to implement Aftershoot into your workflow. So this means you can either use the My Selections tool as a culling in feature. So the AI will still learn from you as you're going through and just pulling out your favorite images. It learns what qualities are most important to you in those selections that you've made. 
Whereas if I were going to deliver 200 of these photos, it would be quite simple for me to just find 47 photos that I don't like and hit the X key and reject them. And in the same vein, the AI is going to learn what qualities I don't like in the photos I rejected. And then last and of course not least, when I find an image that I don't love and I cycle through the similar images, I can use the S key to actually swap them out. So when I hit the S key, it switches them out and the AI is gonna actually begin learning what preferences I prefer over one image to the other. So now it's gonna compare what it was looking at and determine why I picked one over the other and begin learning that process. So these, all will help improve your culling results over time. And this is a fantastic tool. Now, just to cycle all the way back, it's still not gonna make those creative decisions. So if you're looking for it to just reject the ones where the flash didn't fire or just get rid of those out of focus images, it's not going to do that right off the bat. And even as it learns, it's not going to start taking those assessments in and just straight up rejecting those photos. First time you open up Aftershoot, you shouldn't expect it to be 100% accurate, but even as time goes on, you shouldn't necessarily expect it to just get to your ideal number of images. Because again, every time you try something new or try something different, Aftershoot needs to take that into account. And we wanna make sure that as you grow as a photographer, we aren't culling in your old habits, but also learning your new ones as well. So with that being said, those creative decisions, those are still all on you. But let the AI go through, sort your closed eyes, sort your blur, put your similar images together and try and pull out the best image out of those sets based on emotion or sharpness or other factors. Let us do a lot of the heavy lifting and just open it up for a little time to get a little bit further along in your culling workflow. Be sure to check out some of our other videos to learn different things like tool tips and workflows to help speed up the entire review process for you. But we wanted to just get you started on the right foot knowing that Aftershoot is designed to really be that helper and an assistant to the human being. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next tutorial video.